by thanking the President of Pakistan for accepting the suggestion to summon this joint session of Parliament to discuss the situation, the desperate situation, arising out of the recent actions taken by India and Indian Health Kashmir. We may we may have rendered this House dysfunctional, Mr. Speaker. As we all saw this morning, we were supposed to meet at 11.30. We didn't start till 4.30. Vada karne ke baad, Sadr Zardari sahab ka production order to the nahi nikla tha. Aapka bada meherbani aapne aakhir kar nikala. Or Sadr Zardari sahab is joint session mein apna kidaar ida karega. But so far, we have been unable to pass any legislation Perhaps the greatest achievement of this parliament is that we banned the term select for our selected prime minister. Our afsos ke saath kehna padta hai, magar janab speaker, aapne aaj tak apna hi, you haven't been able to complete your own house. Unfortunately, aaj bhi itna ahem mauke pe سارے ممبران نیشنل اسمبلی موجود نہیں ہیں اس میں سابق وزیر اعظم شاید خاکان عباسی صاحب مسلم لیگ نواز کا پنجاب پریزیڈنٹ رانا سنالہ صاحب اور ہمارا دو ایم این اے ساؤت وزیرستان اور نورت وزیرستان سے آج بھی موجود نہیں ہیں میں پھر سے آپ کے سامنے اپیل کرتا ہوں جناب سپیکر کہ آپ اپنا ہاؤس مکمل کریں بہت افسوس ہے کہ ہم نے نہ بجٹ کے وقت مکمل کیا تھا اور نہ اس اہم موقع پہ جب ہمیں سب کشمیر پر بات کرنا تھا جوائنٹ سیشن میں ہم تب بھی اپنا ہاؤس مکمل نہیں کر سکے ایوری قویسٹن آسٹ آف دی گورنمنٹ پر دی آپوزیشن اس نیور رسپونڈڈ ٹو ویڈ لوجک ریزن اور ایون ان ایکسپلینیشن آل وی ہیر پرسنل اٹاکس personal attacks, slurs, and insults. But we still appreciate and we still welcome the decision to call this, to call this joint session of parliament. For we all feel it's necessary, necessary to speak in one voice for the people of Kashmir. What has happened in the recent days, Mr. Speaker? We've seen cluster uh, bombs uh, Bilal, destroyed. Sir, just one minute. I, uh, Chief Minister, سندھ تشریف پرما ہے میں پوری ہاؤس کی طرف سے اس کو ویلکم کرتا ہوں سچیف کو ویلکم کرتا ہوں جناب سپیکر پچھلے دنوں ہم سب نے دیکھا کہ کس طریقے سے انٹرنیشنل ان وائلیشن آف انٹرنیشنل لو کلسٹر بومز وی یوزڈ آن انیسنٹ سیویلینز وی سو ہاؤ ٹورسٹ ان پلگرمز ور ایکسپیلڈ فرم کشمیر We show the closure of all educational institutions, the massive deployment of troops throughout Kashmir, all communications, all internet, all mobile phone services have been shut. The arrests of any and all prominent political leaders within Kashmir, including including former chief ministers and those who've served as allies of the PJP government. And finally, a brutal historical attack, an attack not only on, on, on Kashmir, but an attack on the United Nations, an attack on international law, on international norms and international precedents, an attack on democracy, an attack on rule of law, an attack on the inalienable right to self-determination, an attack obviously on the, of, on, the, on the Muslims of Kashmir, on the Muslims of Kashmir, but also an attack on India, an attack on the idea of India, an attack on the idea of India as a secular democratic India where all citizens had the opportunity to be treated equally. It's an attack. It is indeed an attack on the India of Nehru and Gandhi, but it's also an attack on the India of Vajpayee. The unilateral usurpation, unilateral usurpations of rights forever guaranteed to Kashmiris. The unilateral, un, 
democratic, illegal revocation of Article 35A and 370 demolishes the historical identity of Jammu and Kashmir. It uh, occupied Kashmir. It opens, it opens the door. It opens the door for Kashmiris to be turned into a mi minority in their own homes. If Kashmir was a flashpoint before, if Kashmir was a human rights disaster before, if peace in the region was held hostage to Kashmir before, with one stroke of the pen, Mr. Speaker, with one stroke of the pen, Mr. Speaker, India has now opened up a Pandora's box that has the potential to engulf the entire regions in flames. It has the potential to engulf the entire region in flames, and we have also opened the door to a potential nuclear catastrophe. We will not accept it. The people of Kashmir will not accept it. The people of India should not accept it, and the world should not accept it, Mr. Speaker. Modi is playing with fire. Janabe Speaker, Janabe Speaker, I feel passionately about the people of Kashmir, not just as a Pakistani, not only because Shaheed Zulfikar Ali Bhutto is renowned, renowned for his contribution to the Kashmir cause. Indeed, today, if we celebrate February 5th as, as Kashmir Day, it's because of Shaheed Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. It's not only because Shaheed Motarama Banerjee Bhutto advocated for the Kashmir cause on the international stage, the OIC contact group that the government is now referring to are a result of her efforts. But Mr. Speaker, we feel passionately about Kashmir because they are our brothers and sisters. They are our kith and kin. We share a history. We share geography. We share a culture. We share a religion. We share the same blood. We have the same soul. They have they have the right to live in peace, Mr. Speaker, just as we do. They have a right to choose their own destiny, Mr. Speaker, just as we do. And they have a right to freedom, Mr. Speaker, just as we do. This unfulfilled promise, this unfulfilled dream, is not only a dream of every, every peace-loving Kashmiri, but it is also the dream of every Pakistani. We will not stay silent. We will not stay silent while our Kashmiri brothers and sisters cry out for help, Mr. Speaker. We demand, we demand leadership from this government. The, the Prime Minister was asking what is it that he should do. But so far, Mr. Speaker, we have not even seen a policy statement. All we've had is a speech and a tweet and this ahistorical speech without any context, without any direction, without any plan, without any strategy. Selected or not, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister of Pakistan must rise to the occasion. This is what every Pakistani expects from him. It is absolutely disgraceful that the Foreign Minister of Pakistan and our representative of the United Nations are out of station. The Prime Minister of Pakistan must call them back and they must get to work. The Prime Minister of India, Prime Minister Modi, is an extremist Prime Minister with blood on his hands, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Pakistan has now twice welcomed his election. This has been a grave mistake. An extremist Hindutva takeover of India with the butcher of Gujarat now occupying the highest office in the land. This was, a this was an important strategic opportunity. An opportunity for Pakistan to expose them. To expose their nefarious designs. Instead, we repeatedly chose we repeatedly and unfortunately chose to give Mr. Modi legitimacy. Can you, can you imagine, Mr. Speaker? Can you imagine if a religious party, a religious party 
an extremist religious party with the history and the record similar to the butcher of Gujarat or the RSS was to come to power in Pakistan? Do you think India would be welcoming his election? Do you think that the Indian Prime Minister would be caught dead at his oath-taking ceremony? Do you think that they would have welcomed the extremist Prime Minister's re-election and hoped that he would have solved the dispute in Kashmir? No, Mr. Pa no, Mr. Speaker. Pakistan should have seen the warning signs. We should have understood Modi's extremist Hunbitva ideology. We should have understood Modi's and RSS's manifesto and acted accordingly to foil his nefarious designs. Unfortunately, we chose appeasement and the results are before us. We have missed many an opportunity, Mr. Speaker. We've missed many an opportunity, but we must now act wisely. We must now act wisely when so much is at stake. Pakistan's historical objections to Article 370 aside, after the revocation of Article 370 in 35A, India has officially, there is no more pretenses, India has officially become an occupying force in Indian health Kashmir. Because the basis, the basis of Makbuza Kashmir's ascension to India was Article 370. Prime Minister Modi came into his second term with a hate mandate. And we can expect him to further on this hate mandate and further appease the extremists in India. As the Prime Minister also admitted today, the revocation of these articles were part of their manifesto. It is surprising, it is surprising that, it is surprising that despite five years of Modi's state terrorism in Indian health, Kashmir, his autocracies against the people of Kashmir, our own Prime Minister was hoping and praying for his success. Yeah. India's, India's steps to revoke Article 370 and has eradicated India's credibility and any leftover legitimacy as a democratic state. If all of what India's doing is legal, then why have they not only arrested the Hurriyat leadership, but they've also arrested those Kashmiri leaders who used to run in their elections? Former chief ministers who ruled over Kashmir at the behest of Delhi. It is because they know what they're doing is illegal. They know what they are doing. Each and every Kashmiri will oppose tooth and nail. Nothing better defines the ramifications of India's actions, Mr. Speaker, than former Chief Minister Mehbooda Mufti's statements. In the previous government of the BJP, she served as Chief Minister of Kashmir. And even, and she herself has said that it is the darkest day for Indian democracy and that people like her who did not believe in the two-nation theory have been proved wrong. India can, become, India can become an occupying force, Mr. Speaker, but it can never change the status of Kashmir as a disputed territory. Pakistan, Pakistan must take drastic diplomatic measures. The Western world is in disarray. And we cannot realistically expect the type of reaction that this, that this event, uh, this event and events like this would typically merit. But we still must engage. Pakistan must engage with the United Nations as the status of Kashmir as a disputed territory is forever preserved within their resolutions. As a member of the OIC, Pakistan must try and get a special session of the OIC, at least at the foreign minister level, so we can send a strong message to the world that whatever our differences, the Muslim world is united when it comes to the issue of Kashmir.
The UN High Commission for Human Rights report has said, Mr. Speaker, that it is a conflict that has robbed millions of their basic human rights and continues to inflict untold suffering. The report urged the United Nations Security Council to, quote, consider establishing a commission of inquiry to conduct a comprehensive and independent investigation into human rights violations in Kashmir. It is unfortunate when the United Nations when the United Nations was saying this, the Prime Minister of Pakistan was saying he wishes that Prime Minister Modi wins the election I say it again, Mr. Speaker, that a tweet is not enough, that speech was certainly not good enough. There was no formal statement from Pakistan. Who else is supposed to speak for the people of Kashmir? The foreign minister is not even in the country. He's not present here for the joint session. I appeal to the prime minister, Shireen Mazari Saiba, ko aap foreign minister banai shayad hum is issue ko sahi tarika se handle kar sake. We must demand. We must demand, and I'm sure the United Nations Commission report to her human rights. We must demand as Pakistan that that inquiry be formed. And the events over the last few days have provided us with ample, ample evidence of why it must be formed immediately. We must call on the world community to play its role. The international community, the international community must take stock of Indian atrocities. It has refused all offers of dialogue. India is slowly shutting all, all avenues for bilateral dialogue by going against the spirit of the Simla Agreement, which ensures that no side will take unilateral actions to change the status quo. The Modi government, the Modi government is neither interested in bilateral dialogue it's neither interested in bilateral dialogue, nor is it interested in mediation, and nor does it pay heed to the United Nations. We expect the Prime Minister of Pakistan to use the full force of his office and all available international forums to advocate for the people of Kashmir as if they were his own children. Calls for help from occupied Kashmir started from last week, Mr. Speaker. Our party and others had called attention to this issue. But the government was either too busy celebrating the DC photo op or bashing political opponents to even take notice. We do not want, we do not want to hint at the question of collusion, but I must inform you, Mr. Speaker, I must inform you, Mr. Speaker, that these are the questions being asked. Why the criminal, criminal silence? Aap mujhe batai janabe, Speaker. Agar hum us taraf baite hote, aur select vizire azam khan saab is opposition mein hota, aur hum teen, char din ke liye sirf ek tweet maarte, khan saab humare saab kya kar? expect we hope we hope that the government of Pakistan takes the initiative shows leadership and rises to the occasion the desperate people of Kashmir are looking towards you the country demands action we hope that the Prime Minister does not let us down as I've said before, Mr. Speaker, that tweet's not good enough, that speech's not good enough. Because history will ask us. History will ask us where we were when the children of Kashmir were being blinded by pellet guns. History will ask us where we were when the daughters of Kashmir were being raped as a political weapon. History will ask us where we were when cluster bombs were falling on Kashmir. Our answers will be disappointing, Mr. Speaker, because we have not thus far risen to the occasion. 
However, when history asks us where we were, when the integrity, dignity, and legal status of Kashmir was assaulted, where we were, when the people of Kashmir needed us most, I hope that history will, history will recall that we fought with honor. I'm sure that the Prime Minister of Pakistan does not want to be remembered as the Prime Minister of Pakistan who gave up on Kashmir. In the end, in the end, Mr. Speaker, I would like to remind everyone that still remains present here that today, today as a nation, we stand at a crossroads of history, at a defining moment, from now on, we will be judged not as individuals, but as nations. It is in times like these that na nations are either made. It is at times like these that nations are either made or forgotten as footnotes in history. We have only two options before us. Either we accept Modi, the butcher of Kashmir's homogeny, desert our Kashmiri brethren, brethren and live a life of humiliation or we or we rise to the occasion take a proud principled nation and reject Modi's aggressive treacherous and extremist Hindutva ideology I say we choose the latter Mr. Speaker the honorable option we have to speak with one voice not just as uh, as, as, as Punjabis, Sindhi, Baloch, Pashtun, Kashmir, but as Pakistanis. We must shun. We must shun all our differences and convey to the world that we stand united with our Kashmiri brethren. Janabi Speaker, we've had, we've had prime ministers who have said that we will fight for 10,000 years for the Kashmir cause. We have had Prime Ministers who have said Prime Minister ka khamoshi mayus kun hai Hamara Vizir Azam ke tweets kafi nahi hai Umeed hai ke Vizir Azam Khan sahab leadership dikhayenge Or hum sahab us leadership ko support kar sakenge Aapka shukriya